Um, I want to introduce our guest speaker today, Brandon McDaniel. Brandon joined the Missouri Department of Economic Development International Trade Office in February as an international trade specialist. Prior to that, he worked as a contract international security specialist in corporate, executive, and high threat international security operations. Brandon is a military veteran who served the United States Marine Corps from 2005 to 2015 in various international capacities. Brandon attended University of Missouri and possesses a BS, BA in International Business and Economics and a BA in International Studies with a, Chi with a Chinese minor. He interned as a market research analyst for MU International Trade Center. He enjoys assisting Missouri companies in international trade and is fascinated by the economics of international trade. I also would like to recognize Olivia Ross in the audience today. She is a trade specialist um, for Missouri Department of Economic Development, and this is her region. So with that being said, I'm going to hand it over to Brandon. Thank you. Uh, mic on? Okay, great. Well, thank you for being here this morning, and thanks for having me. Um, we're going to kick this off. Maybe. There we go. Okay. So before we kick off about why export to Ireland, we're going to talk about why would you want to export at all. And demand, access, profitability, and risk mitigation are those are those reasons why you would want to export as as a um, U.S. company? Ninety five percent of consumers are outside of the United States. Uh, U.S. products tend to be perceived as high quality or innovative, uh, with a high level of customer service and sound business practices. Uh, access is another reason. Uh, small and medium sized companies don't need to be excluded from exporting. In fact. Almost all companies that export are considered a small or medium sized enterprise. Through improved logistics channels, trade agreements, uh, advancements in global e commerce, and uh, export assistance from various trade organizations has made exporting more accessible to uh, small companies and firms of all sizes. That includes uh, service providers and producers. So, uh, profitability is another reason. You can, you can be profitable in exporting regardless of the size of your company. Even, even we, ha we have uh, exporting companies that we work with with less than 10 employees that their primary source of income is, is through exporting. And so uh, whether you're, you're providing services or you're manufacturing and making a product that you or any type of widget that, that you sell domestically, um, it's feasible to, to export nowadays. So uh, companies that do export, they show higher total revenues, faster revenue growth, and higher labor productivity than peer businesses that focus solely on domestic sales. Uh, the last reason to consider exporting is risk mitigation. Uh, you have an easier time weathering sector fluctuations as well as economic downturns by diversifying your income streams. Uh, for example, businesses that may operate seasonally here in Missouri, they might be able to find markets overseas that it's not a seasonal market, so they can uh, close that gap in uh, seasonal income. Another reason is pricing strategies. Uh, because a U.S. made good or a Missouri made good is perceived as high quality or innovative, uh, you may be able to capitalize on that in, a, in an overseas market. For instance, um, in the United Arab Emirates, many U.S. goods uh, command a 20 to 30 percent premium by simply being a quality U.S. good. Now, you have to, you have, to have uh, some sort of different product differentiation there or have a quality product. You, you're not going to have success if you, you know, if you have a poor product that you haven't done a proper pricing strategy, but that's something to consider. Um, so we are the Missouri International Trade and Investment Office, as Katie mentioned, and we do have 14 global offices uh, that we uh, have full-time staff in that assist Missouri companies uh, in their exporting endeavors. And so we have three trade specialists that cover um, the Americas. Uh, Myself, I, I cover Europe, the Middle East, and North Africa, and we also have a trade specialist that covers uh, Asia. So 
we try to try to cover the globe uh, as, as much as we can and uh, in key markets for Missouri companies. Uh, this here is just a, just a, a map to, to give uh, an overview of Ireland's northwest location in, in, in terms of the European Union. And so you can see it's just in the northwest part. The uh, Republic of Ireland has a population of a little over 5 million uh, that they are projecting. Uh, they want an inflow of a million citizens by 2030. Uh, the Republic of Ireland is comprised of 26 of 32 counties, the remaining being in Northern Ireland, which is part of the United Kingdom. GDP of about 590 billion US dollars, making it usually around the 30th uh, largest economy by GDP. Um, then GDP purchasing power parity, they are between, usually fluctuate between the second and fourth. Right now they're about the third highest GDP PPP, so a very high income level country. Uh, good amount of purchasing power. And uh, the area of Ireland to give you um, an estimate there is it's roughly the size of West Virginia, a little bit larger than the state of West Virginia. And the largest city is the Dublin metro area, which is 1.4 million people. So just gives you a little bit of a visual there on the size and du Dublin, the capital is on the Eastern shore and then Cork and Galway are two other uh, important cities. Um, on the economic freedom ranking, Ireland usually ranks between fifth and eighth. It's the sixth freest economy as, as of 2021. It's in the top quartile of most free, so uh, an 8.11 out of 10. 10 is a perfect score. There are no countries that are, that are perfectly ranked 10 out of 10. Uh, and and these, these take in various, uh, various factors, a, a huge comprehensive uh, spreadsheet that the uh, Fraser Institute's been working on since 1975 that takes into account you know, size of government, legal systems, soundness of, of money, uh, freedom to trade internationally, as, as well as the regulatory burden. So uh, Ireland is a, a, a free economy uh, with, with favorable business can, climate. Um, we do share some sister cities, uh, the state of Missouri with, with Ireland. Uh, there's a total of six. So the city of St. Louis and city of St. Charles uh, share sister cities with uh, Carndona and Inishowen, as well as Galway and Donegal. So that's kind of a, a neat uh, cultural tie. Uh, that's one of the main reasons to consider uh, exporting to Ireland or doing business in Ireland is cultural ties. Uh, there are between four and 500 Missourians every year that are born in Ireland, and uh, usually between 750 and 800,000 uh, Missourians with Irish ancestry. Multiple cultural organizations uh, throughout the state of Missouri that participate in various uh, cultural and exchange events, as well as the various sister city programs and uh, and and. Um, different uh, arts and, and things like that. So um, one that's right here in the Southwest Missouri neck of the woods is the uh, Southwest Missouri cult, uh, Celtic Heritage Festival and Highland Games, which is still ongoing and has a uh, very strong following from my understanding. And uh, reasons why you should consider exporting to Ireland. The U.S. companies can capitalize on the fact that Ireland is the only European market that is a member of the EU and a member of the Eurozone, as well as being primarily English speaking. In addition to the advantage of the common language, uh, access to educated, well-connected business partners is relatively easy through the pro-business and common law environment. There's a lot of cultural ties, but as well as uh, ways of doing business uh, are very parallel. And uh, Ireland is ranked 11th by the IMD World Competitiveness Ranking, up from 13. Uh, uh, but um, I also like the number six on the Economic Freedom Ranking in Index as well as a good metric. Uh, some other important reasons to consider Ireland. It's a viable test market for small and medium-sized businesses looking to export for the first time because it, it has a strong export economy, pro-business climate, 
and it can be a great test market for breaking into Europe because of its location and proximity to the United Kingdom and the EU. Uh, so it provides good access to that, that market of 740 to 750 million people. Additionally, it has a high receptiveness to the US products. Uh, it's a fertile product breeding ground for American brands and American products and, and testing out products that you may want to enter into some more high re highly regulated economies within the EU down the road. And I already touched on uh, the positive reception of US goods, uh, and, but you can also find good support from local partners and local distributors that can help you get those products and services into the wider EU. All right, so Ireland uh, for many years has been the fastest growing economy in Europe. There have been some fluctuations there and, and as well as some you know, uh, troubling times in the 90s, but uh, by and large, things are, are, are outlook is good for Ireland, uh, positive economic outlook. Uh, rising, rising energy prices are a concern to, to, to the continued global challenges, but it's certainly not the only economy in Europe that, that faces some energy challenges. Uh, but um, Ireland's GDP, GDP forecast for 2022 was over 12%, which is incredible, uh, as well as uh, their support there for sustained demand for US products, technologies, and services going into, at least into the medium term. There we go. Uh, there's also support there with, uh, the, through cultural interaction, as well as the US Embassy Dublin, uh, works very closely with multiple partners. Uh, as you can see, there, there's tons of partners out there for people wanting to make connections in, in the business world, the business community, as well as companies wanting to import and export and, uh, and interact through investment, either going inbound or outbound. So uh, Irish companies wanting to invest in Missouri and Missouri companies potentially wanting to invest in, in Ireland. Uh, there's several market opportunities. Um, these do, uh, the, first, the first row there is for collaborative agreements uh, with Irish companies that, that are out there and uh, can be key sectors for making direct investment or on both sides of the pond. So cybersecurity, software digital, um, internet of things and artificial intelligence. Uh, green technologies like offshore wind, as well as alternative energy. Uh, there's tons of, uh, tons of opportunities there, as well as uh, smart grids, uh, safer cities, um, smart energy, uh, already talked about renewables, as well as storage. Um, healthcare, health tech, and digitalization uh, of medical, medical services, as well as uh, med tech and med devices. Are, are other, other opportunities that you can find in Ireland. And uh, safety and security. So in, in addition to cybersecurity, there's physical security opportunities as well. So those are more on the investment side, but um, on the longer term scale for, for exporting, uh, things that go to support the telecom industry and, and telecom infrastructure, uh, port infrastructure, uh, transportation, I already talk, mentioned offshore renewables, but offshore re renewables are not only on the investment side, but the exporting of actual physical goods and then sustainable technologies. Okay, so there are some challenges to entering, entering uh, not only Ireland, but uh, also the United Kingdom. Uh, there's strong competition from Irish and European suppliers, so it's important to have a quality product or a product that can differentiate itself or uh, has some sort of niche. Uh, US, US exporters, they, they need to find a combination of those and find their right uh, fit and when entering, but this is true of uh, entering any new market, not just Ireland. Um, as a small open economy, Ireland can be vulnerable to geopolitical and global economic pressures. Um, it's already a strong exporting nation. Um, Known for, uh, known for U.S. inbound investment into Ireland uh, more so than importing U.S. products. That, that, that isn't a deal breaker by any means. If you find, if you have an innovative product or a quality product or a product that has a niche, you're going to have great success in exporting over to 
uh, Ireland and the UK. And uh, last but not least, there are uh, potential for EU or global minimum corporate or business taxes in the future and uh, potential increased regulatory burden on that foreign investment going into Ireland. Those are just some things to consider on the challenges to enter. So things that we bring from Ireland, uh, imports that we uh, they come from Ireland. Uh, you can see the United States is Ireland's largest trading partner for imports, uh, followed by Belgium, Germany, and UK. Uh, some of the products that we tend to bring and purchase from Ireland uh, from the, into the US are uh, vaccines and cultures, uh, pharmaceuticals, uh, packaged medicines, nitrogen compounds and fertilizers, uh, various integrated circuits and uh, electronics, as well as uh, medical instruments and scented mixtures of various kinds. Um, this is just a, a chart there of kind of a breakdown of Missouri imports from Ireland from 2022, so last year. Um, chemicals are, are one thing that we import. A, a lot of that can be you know, pharmaceuticals and medicines as well as, as various vaccines. Um, lots of different types of beverages. I'm sure you're all aware of Guinness. Um, and then various some tobacco products, um, niche machinery or custom built machinery is, is another one that you'll see us bringing in from, from Ireland into Missouri uh, for, for uh, production inputs and uh, custom made machinery and things like that. And uh, just various miscellaneous uh, custom made goods are another thing. Oops. This is just a little bit further of a breakdown. I'm, I'm going to. Uh, if you want this presentation, if you want to dive in deeper, um, you can just kind of see that the, the chemicals is the biggest one, but you've got uh, uh, pharmaceuticals and medicines as well as base chemicals and uh, beverages as well. So this is just a further breakdown of the previous chart. Um, this is just a five-year view. It's, it, it's good to get a five-year five -year overview of, of exports. And you can see we, 2021, um, we had a, a big increase in imports from Ireland. Part of that was due to medicines and pharmaceuticals uh, over the COVID era. And uh, this is a little bit outdated. This, this, doesn't, uh, this year to date for 2023 doesn't have a second and third quarter in there yet. So that number is deceivingly low on imports from Ireland. Okay, so exports, things that Missouri companies export to Ireland. Uh, transportation equipment is, is the largest percentage of that, and that can be anything from school buses to agriculture, um, automotive products or automotive parts. Um, chemicals are a big part of that. We, we make a lot of chemicals in Missouri, whether they be lubricants, medicines, pharmaceuticals, and so on and so forth. Uh, we also send a lot of chemicals uh, over that way. And uh, Missouri, it's one of the things Missouri is known for, as well as plastic and rubber products. And we also make uh, some uh, circuit boards and electronics, various pieces and, and uh, intermediate goods that can go into completed products there in Ireland. And uh, other, you know, that can be uh, wood products, uh, um, um, custom niche products and things like that. Uh, and you have, you actually have some companies here in Southwest Missouri that are known for um, various types of wood products or, or uh, um, custom made wood products. Again, just a, a further breakdown, if you wanna dive into this uh, with the presentation, you can kind of see a breakdown by uh, the four digit North American uh, industry classification codes, if, if you'd like to see a further breakdown of how uh, those exports factor in. And it's just, just, just a three year overview of that. Um, pretty consistent that, that chemicals and machinery and fabricated metal products are some of those top things that, that we export uh, to Ireland, um, as well as also into the United Kingdom. As a, just a five, a, another five year export. Uh, as of the first quarter, we had uh, sent $48 million in goods from, from Missouri uh, to, uh, to Ireland. Uh, so I'll be interesting to see how we finish this year with the second, third and fourth quarters once that data starts trickling in. I think it'll be a, a pretty strong resurgence for uh, Missouri exports. And obviously we have so, some anomalies to, there to where um, 2021, 2020 through 2022, we had a little bit of a dip there through the COVID uh, era, as well as uh, various other factors like 
shortages in containers um, and, and other things cause global challenges, not just for Missouri exporters, but all US exporters. Okay, that's, uh, that, that's it for the basic presentation. I'm happy to take some questions if anyone has them. No questions. Not nearly as polished as the professors you're used to, <laughs> to hearing, but happy to answer any questions you may have. It doesn't have to be just about Ireland. It can be um, exporting in general or, or international trade related. Mm -hmm. Or even about the Missouri Department of Economic Development. Any questions? I'll ask a question. Okay. Hey. Sure. All right, Dr. Cravens. I, I can shout. So uh, Dan Cravens, I teach entrepreneurship here. So with regards to like some of the medical biotech things, regulatorily, what, what kind of hurdles would a Missouri company have? And then for an Irish company doing business here in the U.S., what kind of things look at the FDA and, and certain, you know, yeah. how is that handled? And does your department have a role in kind of helping guide those folks in those processes? Sure. That, that's actually a great question. So uh, it, it is one of the markets where you do have a lot of um, FDA and EPA recognition uh, that can that can that, that's not necessarily true across the board for every product, but a lot of times in the medical device, medical tech, and uh, in the pharmaceutical side of things, you will see um, Irish government. Uh, they will recognize FDA and EPA approvals on things. However, uh, like. Like many countries, there is some protectionism where they want to protect their own domestic industry. So, uh, if there, if it's an, if it's a sector where where Ireland wants to grow its domestic side of that, you may find some protectionism or just delayed or regulatory uncertainty. And what our office would do would would be to uh, try to do a customized market research report, and those are available to Missouri companies uh, at no cost. And if that if that still isn't quite um, getting us a deep enough dive into answering those questions, we'll kick that up and connect that company with uh, the Department of Commerce and the U.S. Commercial Service, and try to get work, try to get um, uh, people on the ground in their teams that, that that may be able to dive into that a little bit further and, and interact with embassies and so on and so forth to try to try to get a direct, more direct answer and, and kind of a more comprehensive uh, if our market research can answer that question. My pleasure. I think we had another one right here. So what, what is like the most difficult part of exporting? I mean, more like what are the complications than one face when trying to get something out of this country to another one? Sure. So there, there's actually there can be there can be a lot of challenges. Um, there, there are there are, there are different factors such as you know maybe the size of your product and whether your product can be containerized. So if you have a large product that can't fit in a shipping container, that can complicate things. You may need to do what's called row row, roll on, roll off, or find some sort of customized shipping avenue. Also, you know, being in the middle of the country can be. Uh, a little bit of a challenge too, because uh, we don't have direct access to ocean freight maritime ports in Missouri. However, we do have the Mississippi and Missouri River, as well as a lot of freight and trucking logistics that can at least get your product to a coastal port, and from there it can be shipped overseas. Uh, also, especially during COVID, cost was was prohibitive because there was a, a massive shortage in shipping containers. Uh, there weren't enough, there were a lot of vessels that were um, kind of just halted in many ports. There was, there was a shortage of vessel availability as well as, you know, COVID restrictions, uh, uh, crews on, on various maritime vessels, um, and, and shortage of labor. So those all did uh, a number to a lot of companies who are trying to get their goods overseas, and they saw, you know, what what may have been uh, typically, a, you know, a three or four thousand uh, dollar a logistics and freight bill and in customs duties to get get their container from point A to point B. Uh, those could those could double or triple easily in, in that era. So that posed a challenge as well, especially if the domestic company you know here in the united states was covering the cost of that shipping now that, that can be offset when you're when you're entering into uh 
uh, when you're entering into a new agreement with a, with a, a, a purchaser or a buyer overseas, uh, you can mitigate some of that risk by using, uh, by using the Export-Import Bank, by uh, coordinating with, your, with the Department of Commerce, but you can also work in, in, on the front end, work into um, the cost of, cost of goods going overseas that the buyer will cover those costs. So those are some of the ways that you can kind of mitigate that. Uh, there's multiple challenges uh, in addition to, you know, do, do you produce something that could be perceived as a technology that our government wants to protect? So they may not want you to send that to certain countries. Um, you may have a, a, a product that, that is perfectly, uh, 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 for a perfectly legitimate reason, you need to send uh, a, like a circuit board or a piece of a good that's you know, a partially assembled product that goes into a larger product, um, that that could be perceived as a potential military technology or a defense technology. And so th those are some of the challenges you, you may face. But by and large, if, if you've got just, you know, you're producing something and, and um, you know, there's, there's not a lot of quirks to it, um, you, you know, there's not a lot of trade restrictions between the U.S. and Ireland that are going to prohibit you from getting that good from point A to point B. Great question. Any other questions? No? Well, I have a question. How many of um, small businesses do you work with in exporting versus large corporations? It's overwhelmingly small and medium-sized businesses. I think it's 84.5% of the companies we work with, we work with hundreds of Missouri companies, uh, like 84.5% of them are, are small and medium-sized businesses. And I, I, I really mean like, you know, most of them are less than 100 employees. So uh, exporting is, is not impossible. It's not always easy. There, it, you know, sometimes it takes some patience, especially when you're getting started. But really, it, 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 it truly is um, it's, it's truly a good thing to diversify your income streams. It's, it's, and it's not right for everyone. You know, so, some, 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 there are certain types of business models where you, know, you so, solely focus on, on domestic goods. But if you have a good and there's demand for it overseas and you, know, you, you maybe have a, a competitive advantage there or you've got a high quality product or it's innovative in some way and people want it, you know, you, you know, it, it's, it's a win-win. Any other questions? Oh, another one. Can you think of any companies in Southwest Missouri, our part of the state, that export to Ireland? Or are they primarily in the Kansas City and no? You, you 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 have some here that that, that go to um, at least the United Kingdom. Uh, we we do have a a little bit of a challenge with the non-disclosure, but. Um, So, yeah, yeah. So, without without giving out names of, of specific companies that are under a non disclosure agreement, uh, we we you do have uh, you know cybersecurity firms down here, uh, wood 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 products firms or or um, timber producers down here in, in the southwest. So. Um, some of these you could potentially find on your own via the internet, but those those are some of the companies in in your region that are exporting to the United Kingdom or Ireland. Thank you, Brandon, for uh, driving down and speaking to us today. I really enjoyed your presentation, and um, he'll be around for a couple minutes after if anybody has questions you didn't want to ask in the audience. So thank you. My pleasure. And.